Hi, Stuart. I know um, you channel a lot of the answers to the questions, but do you ever channel in, it's called light language? Does that ever come through you or could you, do you have thoughts around that? Well, you'll have to define for me the meaning of light language. What are you, what are you talking about? Is Shakti not light language? Is energy, okay. pure energy, not language that transcends words? So I don't know what light language is. I've never heard that. Uh, okay. It's, um, it's a language that comes through that um, sounds melodic um and i've heard different people speak it and sometimes it comes through me and it um i don't know the translation exactly but i can feel what the words mean and so i just didn't know if you'd had this experience well you know look i've had this experience i have it in every one of these meditation classes there's uh you know there's an indefinable language that transmits in these classes that uh, has a singular purpose, and that's to nurture everybody that's involved in them, to help lift the consciousness of everyone involved uh, so they can get closer to God. Now, this is, you know, there's no definition for this language. There's no definition for Shakti. Understand, I look, I've said this many times, I'll say it again. Shakti is just energy, it's pure energy. It's not positive, it's not negative, it's not right, it's not wrong, it's just pure energy that emanates from the source of energy in the cosmos, God. It enters people, and you understand, and when it enters people, it's no longer light language. It becomes that labyrinth of whatever human beings are, you know, it becomes that tension, the insecurity, the problems. And in the world, that's how it manifests. It only manifests that way because people, you know, are full of all of that tension. It comes, as you might say, light language. It's indefinable, it's beyond comprehension, it's powerful, it's life-giving, it gives birth to everything that exists on this planet. And yet at the same time, when it, when it flows through people and manifests in the world, it becomes whatever people are. So if people are neurotic and crazy and terrorists and angry and whatever, you know, uh, you know, that's how it manifests. So the job of human beings should be to clarify their inner life, to purify their inner life, so that when this, you know, energy, this light energy, whatever, it comes down and it really fills you, when it manifests in the world, it doesn't manifest as anger and, you know, whatever, people murder, they kill, they rob, they, you know, they create wars, they, they're creating a war now somewhere in Europe, you know, that's what manifests, that's what comes through them, because that's exactly what they are. When it enters them, it's just pure energy, Shakti, there's no polarity, there's no conflict, there's nothing, it's just pure energy. We create the madness. And we only create the madness because we don't, people, I'm not saying people here, but people don't do deep inner work to transform that madness into an open channel that can allow that energy to guide them and enter the world. Love, joy, happiness, you understand? Radiance spirit. So I, you know, I mean, look, I never heard that term, you know, light music or light, what was it, light energy or? Light language. But yeah, but it's basically what I'm talking about. Uh 
hundred percent. We take that white language, that light language, and we transform it into insanity, because that is really what goes on inside people. Doing these meditations, working on yourself, it transforms that so it can come through you and guide you. And then, you know, a person is full of love. That's what goes into the world. Person is full of joy. That's what goes into the world. Person has compassion. That's what goes into the world. A person is full of rage and anger and, you know, you understand resentment and they're victims and that's what goes into the world. So the whole secret of all of this is changing oneself, changing one's inner life. And that's all this meditation is about, changing one's inner life. So that we can communicate with other human beings from the heart, from love, from patience, from forgiveness, from all of these terms that are you know, that are thrown about in every religion and, every, you know, but people don't change inside themselves to allow that to manifest. It just becomes intellectual words. It's words that are not light language, you know, it, it's dark language. And I love that you said labyrinth. Hmm? That it goes into the labyrinth of the person and that's such a great visual. Well, that's what it is. We're so complicated inside and so confused and so full of so many different nuances of, you know, personality and who we are and what, what that, that's how it manifests. So look what we have. We're living in an insane asylum. You understand? That insane asylum could change if people would change, but I'm sure that's why reincarnation was invented. <laughs> People, thousand lifetimes in order to change. But here we're doing a deep inner work that hopefully with the help of God and the, the depth of work we all do on ourselves, we can change that labyrinth. We can change that complexity, simplify it, refine it. So that when we interact with the world, it's love, it's compassion, it's forgiveness, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question they would like? I'll ask you a question, Stuart. Uh, you and Rudy talked about not protecting oneself, like just to not close off, in other words, like and have to protect oneself. So can you talk about not protecting oneself and yet not being open to, um, you know, like where the innocence gets eaten up, you know, kind of dynamic? Well, look, when the innocence will always get eaten up if a person doesn't have the inner strength to sustain it. You understand? Innocence by its, I mean, look at babies. Every one of them is born this innocent, delicious, juicy little creature that we can't take our eyes off. We want to hug and kiss. There's so much sweetness coming out of them. They get older, it all gets beaten out of them. They don't have a system inside to sustain it. So people that have that kind of innocence, it's taken away from them because life is not very innocent, it's predatory. It eats people up, it consumes them. You know, it's almost cannibalistic the way it consumes people's inner energies and inner being. And, you know, and and because people don't have that grounding inside, that foundation to sustain and keep that openness in themselves. That's what we're trying to build here. That's why I keep coming back over and over again to the, for the eight billionth time, the third chakra, <laughs> which is the place where you build that kind of inner strength. 
And then the, then the love, the joy, the open, it can't be taken away from you. You know, it can't be ripped out of you because you have the strength to sustain it. And other people's bullshit is not going to rip you apart. You know, you can just, you know how to just get rid of it. You don't let it come inside and chew you up. I mean, that's the key to all this. You know, it's not to have, not have innocence and love and that kind of sweetness. You know, we have to have that. But in order for it to sustain and not be ripped out of us, we have to have strength. We have to have that foundation, that rootedness in ourselves that gives us the capacity to live with that sweetness and that love and that innocence without being destroyed by life. And frankly, it will always be tested, always. There's always gonna be something that's gonna come along to test all of us. And if we flunk, please try and sit still. If we flunk the test, all right, we got to grow. We haven't arrived yet. We still have work to do on ourselves. You don't really flunk the test. You just are reminded you haven't gotten strong enough yet. You got more work to do on yourself. And then one day you find you can live with that. And people can't rip it out of you. They will try. I mean, I remember Rudy told me once, he said he couldn't find a better therapist, you know, than his mother, who is a constant reminder of all the things that are wrong with him. I mean, he, she just walks in the room, he will, and she'll find 10 things that are wrong with him. And he said it used to drive him crazy until he finally realized, all right, she's there to point these things out. I can fix them. I'm not intimidated by the things she tells me. I don't have to defend myself. Because when you have to defend yourself that way, it's all the insecurity of ego, you know? And that is very transient in a human being. It's just, I remember Rudy's mother, I'll never forget it. She came up to me one day and said, Stuart, she said, you get, your, you get your energy from God. You get your spiritual life from God. I get mine from diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just cracked up. And what I loved about it, she was telling me the truth. I mean, a diamond was, you know, <laughs> for something so significant in her life that it gave her energy, it gave her a reason to live, you know? I mean, she wasn't lying to me and I loved it, you know? You get your life, you get your energy from God, from spirit, I get mine from diamonds. <laughs> and who am I to judge, you know? What am I, you know, I just, I just cracked up laughing. I said, Ray, I love you, that's it. Not just because you're Rudy's mother, but because you're you and you get your energy from diamonds. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question? Thank me. you. You're welcome. Okay, if there are no more questions, then there'll be a class. What is today? It's Thursday. There'll be a class on Sunday, you know, at the same time. And, you know, I'm sure you're tired of hearing me say this, but I'll say it again. 
I am so grateful that you all show up for these classes because these classes are not only hopefully teaching you, but they're teaching me so much about myself and about what it means to have a spiritual life. And all of you being present here makes this possible. It really makes it possible. So God bless you all and thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all on Sunday. You have a wonderful weekend. And thanks. Bless you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. God bless you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Good night. Good night. Good night.